Loudness, a continuously evolving and controversial topic in music production. In 2023, I'm ending the loudness debate. So, how loud should your masters be? It's not LUFS, it's not a plug-in, and it's not some weird trick that makes doctors hate him. The best way to know how loud your track should be in order to be commercially competitive is with your ears to find the loudness sweet spot in combination with great reference tracks. Every track has a sweet spot for dynamics, density, and loudness that feels just right. This usually involves applying a tasteful level of compression and limiting, However, tasteful is of course subjective. So in order to achieve more consistent and reliable results, we need three to five high resolution mastered reference tracks. So how do we use these to determine loudness? Firstly, we need to understand what makes a great reference track. One, they must sound fantastic to you and the general population. Successful artists with high production budgets set your quality bar very high. This is really, really great for your music, but not so great for your self-esteem. Artists like Drake, Doja Cat, Green Day, Taylor Swift, just to name a few that I like. Two, they must be commercially competitive. If your reference track can be placed side by side with other successful tracks and still sound great. Number three, you have to be very familiar with how they sound in your studio, in your car, and on your headphones. I'm talking frequency balance, dynamic balance, instrument levels, vocal levels, stereo image, and how all these compare with other successful tracks. This deep familiarity creates a reliable anchor for the music you work on every single day. So where can you get great references? One, high resolution libraries like HD tracks. Two, iTunes lossless streaming or Tidal without normalization. These files are still encoded, so they're not my go-to to use for reference tracks. However, to put the audio purist aside in me, they still sound pretty damn great. I got my references from the studio that I work at and they got them from CDs using high quality software, but that's a whole other process. So I'll do a separate video on how to get reference tracks from CDs. So finally, how do you determine the loudness using reference tracks? The goal of mastering is to analyze and quality check mixes to ensure that it sounds as good as possible and is competitive where it's being released. It's important to make sure the track is working musically and sonically at a tasteful loudness level. Play the loudest section of your reference tracks, then play the loudest section of your track. There will be a small variability between your references just because they are different tracks and that's completely normal. Does your track sound too quiet, too loud, too bassy, too bright, too loose, too compressed, does it compete with them at all? Does your track sound slightly better, quieter than the references, or does it sound amazing if it's pushed a little bit past them? All useful questions to determine loudness. What if my mix doesn't sound anything like my references? Every single mix is different. However, competitive does not mean you need to make your track sound the same. You just need to be able to play both side by side and not say, Fuck, mine sounds shit. Achieving a tasteful level of competitiveness is a skill that mastering engineers like myself aim to be really good at. So don't be disheartened if you can't get yours to that level yet, because more than likely the people working on your reference tracks have dedicated their career to that. In this session, I have a mix and two fully mastered reference tracks. I wouldn't generally use my own masters as reference tracks, but since the clients gave me permission to use these tracks in videos, that's why I'm using them. I don't want to get like a copyright ban from Taylor Swift. Let's take a listen to the loudest parts of the references, then compare it to the loudest part of the mix. So it's clear that the mix has to come up in level to be somewhat closer to the reference tracks. Let's do that until we kind of feel it sitting amongst them. I'm going to be flicking quickly between the references and the mix and just kind of observe what I'm doing.
So I think around there is musically tasteful. I definitely don't want it as loud and as dense as the rock lamphead track. I kind of want it more in the ballpark of the UNI track. And I still want to maintain some of that beautiful dynamic performance of the track that we're working on. And obviously this mix hasn't been completely mastered, but you can see that we're somewhat in the ballpark of loudness. Another way we can use references is for the vibe. We can use references for stylistic decisions or maybe just choosing a track that the artist loves. However, if you want commercial competitiveness, I'd recommend not using just solely these references because you're not familiar how they sound or translate and you just haven't spent enough time with them to understand them fully. Ideally, a master is in line with the artist's vision and is competitive with the best productions in the world. And yes, you usually can have the best of both worlds. Now I'm going to play you the final master compared to the reference tracks so you know kind of where I found the sweet spot. So as you can see, they don't sound similar at all, but they definitely are competitive and in the ballpark of the loudness sweet spot of the mix. This master is definitely a lot more kind of rounder and fatter sounding. That's just because the style of the song and the mix, they don't sound the same, yet they are musically tasteful and competitive to one another in my opinion. Back to the video. So here's my main takeaways. Aim to find the loudness sweet spot in your track. Find three to five great quality, high resolution, competitive, commercially released masters and learn them very well. And use these to musically guide your mastering decisions. Don't copy them exactly, just use them as an anchor for your listening. The goal is to be able to play your track side by side with your references and for them to be musically appropriate. Maybe your track sounds better slightly quieter, Maybe it sounds better, slightly louder. So how loud do your tracks actually need to be to be competitive? With the way digital distribution is in 2023, I'd recommend to compare your track to the best productions in the world and then make decisions that best serve your track. If you've made it this far in the video, you're an absolute legend. Thanks for watching and remember to use your ears.